hello friends i welcome all of you in this video i want to talk about the process which is required for upgrading a cisco nexus switch with the new nxos image uh, this process is disruptive because it will cause the reload of the switch so uh, you know we should always know about the process and the steps which are needed to you know to upgrade the switch without any issues means we want to make sure that the process is smooth so first thing is that we should know the model of the switch wherein the upgrade will be performed show version is the command second is that know what is the current image that you are having so here i am talking about system image okay show version is the command for that third thing is that you log in into the cisco website and find out the stable image which is there for the model of your nexus switch like in the next video i'll use 9396px uh, switch though it is of uh, 9000 series but the process is same for uh, whether it's a 5k or 7k it doesn't matter okay so we should uh, just search for the image so let's copy this uh, link and let me show you we should have the permissions to download the image otherwise uh, you will not get this like mine is 9396px nexus switch search for it and click on the nx os system software similarly we have to check it for the epld as well so epld version and system software version uh, ideally should be same always have the same versions so i have clicked there so this star means that this is a stable image so i will be upgrading my nexus switch to this image that is 9.3.13 so this is the image and note that this is the md5 checksum value which talks about the integrity copy this uh, number and save it in your notepad file because once you check the integrity on the actual switch then this value should appear means the value should be same only then we can do the upgrade if it is different it means the image is corrupted all right so download and make sure that you are logged in and you, sh you should have the permissions similarly you can download the uh, epld image right and this one is dot bin and epld will be dot img right once you go back and go to epld updates and go for the 9313 because we should keep the same uh, version and see this is dot img similarly make sure you you copy this number and then later match that md5 value with this one it must match otherwise don't perform the upgrade and reload re upload the image on your switch okay so this thing is done this one is done as well we have to use the md5 checksum value for both images and then download the images and later on upload in the nexus switch so you can use either sftp or usb or tftp process is very same very much uh, similar to how we have been doing it on traditional switches uh, very simple copy space the source space the destination so copy so here i'm just showing you example of sftp if you have a sftp server where the image is there the same image right uh ideally in a big company you know they keep sftp server with all the images rather than you download the image on your workstation they simply have it copied there to make things easy for you so copy space sftp colon double slash the username with which you will log in into sftp server and the ip of the sftp server like 10.1.1.5 and then the image path the folder you can see this is the path
slash abc slash nexus slash nexus 9000 slash the actual file name okay and then space the destination what is our destination boot flash where in boot flash supervisor engine one okay this one is sup one if you want to specify loopback zero as a source interface fine sometimes what happens that we only advertise the loopback zero ips or you can say that the switch is only reachable from the sftp server uh, with the loopback zero ip right in that case you have to specify the source interface and then the copy will start it will also ask you to enter the password for the username this is how it happens in sftp otherwise if you have usb that is also good and then I'll show you how to check the MD5 value on the switch and compare. Then the next very important parameter, we need to check the upgrade path. Let me show you, copy this. This link is mainly for Nexus 9000 series and 3000 series. So this is the link. So what we have to do is we have to click on this first one, disruptive upgrade. I'm not doing this in service upgrade. I'm just doing disruptive upgrade. Specify the current release. Our current is uh, 703i49. Uh, Let's take an example. And target is 9313. It is saying that it's a direct, means I can simply uh, upgrade to this version directly i don't have to hope hope will be there when you let's say you are upgrading to this one so in this case it will tell you that this is your current release you upgrade to this one first then you go to this one if it is possible uh, hope process if you want to try some different path click on show all path it is saying no other path this is the only way out right so first upgrade to this one and then go for this one, right? So make sure that this version is supported on your chassis. You cannot simply take the image and upgrade because like in this case, I told you uh, if you click here and system image, it has maximum limit of 9.3.13, right? It doesn't go beyond that. So there are versions of a 10 series, but these are not supported on this one. Very simple. So this is mainly for Nexus 9K. This is very important. Now the main thing, make sure that the running config backup is taken and all important output of the commands is also taken, right? So if you are doing a upgrade for a single switch, then obviously there will be outage but if you are having pair of switches which are configured with hsrp then you do one thing do it uh, do the upgrade first on the standby and if you are having many vlans and hsrp is configured make sure that the hsrp active state is transferred to another switch right so how you will do it you you'll have to increase the hsrp priority on or under the VLAN by going to the switch you want to make as active. Let's say switch A, switch B. So you want to upgrade the switch B first, but there are VLANs which are active on the switch B. So you go to switch A, increase the priority value for the HSRB for those VLANs. Otherwise, what will happen? Means eventually these will shift, but since the uh, reload happens multiple times so this may disrupt the traffic so you shift the hsrp active state to your peer and then you start the upgrade so let me show you some of the commands which are useful for you i'll upload terminal lens zero show clock show version show inventory environment module license the most important running config show interface status vrf vrf interface so 
all of these commands are important right so also take the output of show interface status pipe include up or show interface status up means the interfaces which are up should be up after the upgrade as well you have to compare the config post upgrade and if you're having ospf eigrp bgp running in that case make sure you get the output so here i think i have not mentioned the bgp but you can do like show ip bgp summary all right and when you start the upgrade disable these routing protocols disable the eigrp ospf and bgp and then you start the upgrade also disable the interfaces which are up and not down so ultimately you have to make sure that the switch is not having any connection with the peer then you start the upgrade and if you are doing it remotely then what will happen you start the you issue the reload command you lose the connectivity so make sure that either you do it locally using console console cable or there is a console switch which you can access remotely and that switch will have console connection to the nexus switch and then access right so there are console switches in the data center definitely you'll find these in the big companies because uh, these switches are really important otherwise you cannot see what is going on if you are sitting remotely and you don't have the consoles a uh, console switch so take the output of these commands these are some of the commands which according to me are important however you are free, you are free to add the uh, you know commands in this file right i'll upload this one so i was here make sure to take the backup of all the running configurations and important commands open a chain control to schedule the downtime because this will be disruptive make sure that all the uh, application and server owners are uh, aware their approval is secured and uh, you will have to tell them to join the call and once you start the upgrade you have to tell them to switch their uh, you know connectivity to the other switch let's say that there are two switches which are in hsrp nexus switch 1 and 2 you want to upgrade that switch number 2 first then you have to ensure that traffic is actually moved uh, to the switch number 1 so the server owners they know how to do it right they also have a teaming they can do so eventually once you shut down the protocol shut down the interfaces that will happen but these are very you know important applications business critical applications so tell them to do it uh, you know before the upgrade only then you start the upgrade because this is not a, not a normal switch where users are connected these are the switches where your servers having critical business applications are connected all right so point number 9 was use console switch to remotely access the nexus switch so ultimately you, you don't need to access the nexus switch uh, using the ip access the console switch using the ip and then console switch has a uh, you know console connection to the nexus switch from console switch you can access this one all right and uh, you may have to create the local id because uh, the cax may not work once you shut down or isolate the switch which you are going to upgrade you may lose the connectivity so make sure that the local id is created it is it is given the uh, network admin privileges so you should always use local id to perform the upgrade even though your tacax is there tacax may become unreachable and after the upgrade you delete the local id means local id for yourself let me mention it here use local id for performing upgrade 
make sure that it has the admin privileges and post the upgrade you have to delete this one don't forget so if you are upgrading the pair uh, which are in hsrp then you can you know uh, transfer the hsrp active state for vlans to other switch by modifying the uh, priority if you increase the priority value the switch will become active if you decrease then it will become uh, standby so preempt option must be there if it is not there configure so you may have to modify the hsrp priority value for all vlans to make a switch active or standby and uh, you may need to shut down all the active interfaces this is the right process shut down isolate the switch uh, and then also shut down the routing protocols that is why the this console switch is very important right you will still have the access if you have console switch otherwise you you would lose everything you cannot do anything and make sure that uh, at least one data center engineer is available during the upgrade and you should have the same model of the hardware available with you in case of any failure in the hardware so a reload will happen that is it so very simple in the next video i'll perform the upgrade thank you so much for your time have a nice day